So uh, welcome to the uh, first Open Active W3C Community Group meeting of 2024. Um, thank you for joining us and putting the time in. Um, this is the first meeting in our new time slot. Um, we've moved the time slot um, to, to, to enable people to join more easily, who perhaps aren't allowed to join by their, their mean employers. Uh, but I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Um, so today at the meeting, what we're aiming to do is kind of give you a bit of an overview of our kind of new approach to operating the W3C and the AEF. Um, I'm then going to talk about the extension to phase five that we have agreed with uh, Sport England. Um, and then we're going to have a look at club data. Uh, and we've got some stuff pre to present on that from ODI uh, and also from London Sport. So we've been thinking uh, about how we can ensure that the Adoption Engagement Forum and the W3C Community Group are adding value to Open Active um, and also offering value to the people who attend the meetings. Um, and over the last year, we've had a few discussions with both groups about priorities. Um, we've tested different ideas and different ways of working with the groups in different meetings. And we're going to implement a few changes for 2024. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that we're doing is we're moving from fortnightly to monthly meetings. Um, we hope this enables us to improve the quality of the meetings and to deliver more compelling agendas, which more people will want to join. Um, both meetings are also going to be held on Wednesdays between one and two. Uh, we had some feedback that the Friday AEF slot was difficult for some people in these days of hybrid and flexible working. Um, and we've picked a lunchtime slot to enable people who aren't allowed to attend during work hours to join the groups. Um, so essentially, there will be uh, an AEF or a W3C every fortnight in, in this, this one o'clock slot. Um, moving forward, we want to ensure that both groups are more focused. Um, so the focus of the AEF is going to be on driving adoption of Open Active. Uh, we expect the meetings will be a mix of show and tell and Q&A and discussion. Um, and we also expect going forward, the AEF will have a really important role in defining requirements and... Uh, specifying ideas for improvement of Open Active that we as the W3, as the technical group, can then respond to. Um, we want the W3C conversations to be more focused on the, the data specifications, but also the kind of associated guidance and tools um, that, that go along with the specifications. And we also want to be focused on um, interoperability with other standards, which I'll talk about in a moment in a bit more detail. <clears throat> Um, we're going to try and build the community outside the meetings um, and we want to make more use of our social channels. So we want to make better use of Slack and GitHub for kind of in community conversation. And we want to make more use of LinkedIn in terms of sharing the, the sharing those conversations with a much wider audience. But we need your help to make these groups successful. Um, we need to attend the meetings. We need you to ask questions. We need you to join and lead discussions to offer presentations and to, and to participate online. And we've updated the Open Active calendar, so it should be clear when the next meetings are. Um, and we're also going to provide better information about these groups on the Open Active website. Um, we're also thinking about exploring the sign up for these groups. Um, it can be a bit dispiriting when you uh, set up a meeting and you only get a, a small number of attendants, attendees. So we, we, will, we, we were thinking about how we can have a, a very simple sign-up system so we at least know that there will be someone to talk to in each meeting. Um, so that's how we're changing the approach to W3C and AEF. Are there any questions on that at all? So just one question for me, Andrew. AEF yep. is acronym, sorry. Don't Sorry, understand. the AEF is the Adoption and Engagement Forum. All right. Okay. Thank you. It's the it's a it's a group of it's an open group for anyone who is interested in the implementation of Open Active, and um, it it provides kind of peer support. It provides uh, use case examples. It provides best practice examples, and it provides a forum where people can kind of um, talk about the things that they're struggling with, which will which we hope to then turn into requirements for improvement. Okay. Cool. So um I'll move on. Um <clears throat> so um 
as everyone knows, we're in phase five of um, ODI's uh, agreement with Sport England to steward Open Active. Um, and phase five uh, was designed to run out from July 2022 through to December 2023. Um, and towards the end of that period, uh, we had quite a lot of conversations with Sport England about what would happen next. Uh, and we proposed to Sport England, actually, the logic model that sat behind phase five of Open Active uh, was a three-year logic model, and it would seem logical to extend phase five to enable us to deliver that logic model. And uh, Sport England uh, were happy with that as a concept uh, and asked us to work with them to develop a, uh, a scope of work and a proposal and a business case. Um, and we, we spent some time uh, at the end of last year working with Sport England to do that. So um, we're now in the situation where Sport England have agreed to fund an 18 month extension to phase five. Um, that extension is there to broadly deliver the same uh, long term objectives, which you should be able to see on the logic model here. Uh, and these objectives are to uh, ensure that the sports sector is serviced by an independent initiative capable, capable of meeting the needs of industry around data, open data, uh, about making open active integral to the national data infrastructure and making sure it's properly maintained and governed, uh, and about using open active to help reduce inequalities and barriers to entry in sport and physical activity. We are going to continue delivering phase five uh, towards those objectives. Um, and what I wanted to do today was just talk about the scope of work in the extension and particularly talk about the scope of work for Workstream 2, which is the infrastructure workstream. So because it's an extension, we have to continue focusing on the areas that we were focusing on in phase five, which were governance, infrastructure, use cases, engagements and communications and management and monitoring. So in terms of the extension, um, in, in the governance work package, our aim is ultimately to implement a new governance model, an operating model for open active in the form of a new independent, viable open active organization. And the aim is that by the end of this 18 month period, that open active organization will exist in some form. This builds on the research that we did uh, last year around different operating models uh, and different organizational structures for open active. Um, and, and the aim this year is that we will um, design the operating model. That's what the organization does. Uh, the organizational structure, so that's the resourcing it will need to deliver that operating model um, and the business plan, uh, which is, sets out how, how that organization will be funded and where funding will come from. Um, this is a really critical piece of work for Open Active, and everything else that we do in this extension period has to focus on giving this new organization the best chance of success. And the key driver for this is that Sport England have been funding Open Active through lottery funding, um, and they've been increasingly clear that they can't fund Open Active through lottery funding forever, uh, and they can't. So, so, so we have to find alternative ways of structuring and funding Open Active, and and that that's our, our primary aim for this eighteen month period in work package one. The other thing that we want to do in this work package is really increase engagement with uh, policy makers, both in the public and commercial sectors, to help secure funding for that organisation. So we want to have quite high level conversations with, with senior stakeholders to help them understand what Open Active is, what value it is adding, and how they can support the initiative going forward. Andrew, just quickly, I, which slide do you, do you think we can see? We can just see the logic model at the moment, and I think. Thank you, that, Howard. Is that Thank you. see one of two? Yeah, um, sorry, I don't know why that didn't jump forward. Um, so work package two is the infrastructure work package, and this has a few aims. So, so the first aim is to maintain the infrastructure, to ensure it's usable um, uh, and maintainable, um, and actually maintainable by any suitably qualified person. 
going forwards. Uh, the second aim is to focus on making it easier for publishers and consumers to implement Open Active. Um, and the third is to focus on developing long-term roadmaps uh, to improve the stewardship of data. Um, the third work package is the use case work package. And I think what we learned in phase five was that it's quite easy to convene people around use cases and have really good discussions around use cases, but it's actually really hard to then turn those conversations into, into delivery of impact. So what we're planning to do in the use case space this time is to continue that work on convening use case communities. And we're interested in thematic communities, we're interested in geographical communities, uh, uh, and Tim Corby is leading our work to, to define use case communities, to engage them, uh, to identify uh, opportunities for use cases. Um, to, to kind of get over that hump of it being really difficult to resource the delivery of use cases, um, we're going to be running a innovation challenge. The innovation challenge will be, be an open challenge. Uh, people will be able to... Um, to, 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 to apply to the challenge and um, we will once we have applications into the challenge uh, in terms of use cases we'll make some decisions and provide some seed funding to some of those challenge uh, those challenges um the, the aim is for that to happen in the second half of this year so we've got some work to do in the first half of this year to design the challenge and then in the second half of the year to launch it to run it um uh, 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 and to kind of essentially seed some of those ideas that some of those new use cases are open active. Um, work package four is the communications work package. What we want to do here is to continue to um, talk openly about open active. We want open active to be seen by a wide range of stakeholders as an impactful initiative with really enormous potential for adding value. Um, to, to drive this forward, we're going to kind of create a culture of communication around Open Active. So you, you should start hearing quite a lot more from the project team about what we're working on, both in terms of Slack posts, uh, in, uh, LinkedIn posts, uh, and more formal blog articles. Uh, but we also want the community to talk more about what it's doing with Open Active, and we're going to try and find ways of encouraging that conversation and that dialogue. And then Work Package 5 is about um, the management of delivery and monitoring of impact. Um, in Phase 5, we had a process of, went through a process of defining and monitoring KPIs to show the impact that open, the Open Active funding from Sport England was having. We're going to do that again in this round, and we're going to try and refine that MEL approach based on what we learned last time. Uh, we're also going to publish uh, shortly, actually, a report that kind of talks about the impact that Phase 5 has and makes, uh, 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 based on that, 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 that MEL approach we had in Phase 5, and we will want to do that again at the end of the extension period. Um, in terms of mon managing delivery, um, ODI will continue to have a delivery manager assigned to this work um, and we will continue to work in a fairly agile way. Um, uh, um, we will continue to tell people about what we're doing and why we're doing it. So that's the, that's the extension at a, an overview level. In, in terms of the infrastructure piece, I thought it'd be useful to dive into some of the detail because I think that's where this group is most, which is the bit which is most relevant to this uh, group. So within the infrastructure um, work street package, there are four work streams. Um, the first one is about improving the user experience to enable the growth of Open Active. Uh, and so what we want to do here is we want to uh, design and deliver improved user journeys for developers. So we want to make it easier for people to move through uh, the process of implementing Open Active, either as a publisher or as a consumer. <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> sorry, Andrew. Is your slide deck moved on? Because we're still looking at phase five extension two of two. Beat me to it, Andy. <laughs> no worries. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. How <laughs> curious! <laughs> this is very odd. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, what, so, 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 this is about improving the journey through Open Active for people who are trying to adopt it to make that process sim make it simpler to make it more obvious what people need to do when they're, when they're going on that journey. Um, we've 
got some funding that we would like to use to bring in a content designer or perhaps a, a content architect to help us with this work. Um, and we will need some input from the W3C as this work gets going. So we will need some help in terms of defining user needs. We'll need some help in terms of testing and improving user journeys. Um, and ultimately, once we have these new user journeys, we want to use these journeys to drive further adoption of Open Active. So actually, we will probably need some help from you in terms of identifying people who could implement Open Active who haven't already. Uh, the second The second part is around supporting and maintaining the data infrastructure. Um, and this is the bulk of the infrastructure work. So the first piece is about actually improving the uh, processes and the procedures and the ways that we deliver maintenance. So we want to have a more robust way of managing the maintenance of open active. We want to be better at prioritizing issues. We want we don't want to be in a position where we have a, a really long backlog. We want a well-managed backlog. So there's some process stuff that we want to sort out. We also want to actually deliver some maintenance. Um, so there are th some things that have rolled forward from phase five. So we want to um, improve the status page to make it more obvious about the state of the, the different feeds of data. Uh, we want to improve the supply and marketplace so it's easier for, to, for, for people to find vendors who can help them. Um, and we need to make some website website improvements more generally. There's some stuff about um, enabling people to rate content. Uh, there's some stuff around the hosting that we need to sort out. Uh, and then the, the final area that kind of rolled forward was, was around improving vocabulary management. So we have a couple of different approaches at the moment to managing the controlled vocabularies that underpin Open Active, and we want to consolidate that, which should hopefully make it easier to implement. Um, as we make these changes, we'll need help from W3C in terms of helping test improvements. Um, and we'll probably use this group in the AEF in term, uh, as, a, as a discussion forum, as a show and tell forum to, to help test the, the sorts of improvements that we want to make. Uh, the last thing we want to do in this space is we want to pilot the open source model of maintenance for open active and sport england are really interested in this so actually what do the what are the the volunteer roles that we need to have in place to maintain what are the volunteer roles we need to have in place to maintain open active what processes should those volunteers be following um and and uh, sport england are really interested in us um advertising for maintainers and possibly contributors for the open active infrastructure um, and potentially testing the processes to fund maintenance activities. I think what we'll need immediately from W3C will be some help in designing these roles. So actually, what is the role definition for a maintainer? What's the role def definition for a contributor? How do we manage those people who are people who are volunteering in those roles? Um, I, 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 and I think there will be a discussion over the next couple of months about actually what do those roles look like? How do they work? I think that's potentially really interesting. Um, so the third area we need to look at is the continuous improvement of the data infrastructure. So, so there are a few things that we want to do here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get to a position where Open Active is maintainable by any suitably qualified person. Um, as we all know, I'm going to have played a massive role in maintaining Open Active since it started. Um, but, but but for the initiative's benefit and to take some pressure off key people that I'm in, you know, we want to get to a position where other people can maintain open active. It's, it's good for the initiative's sustainability. Um, so we have, as, as part of uh, the extension, we have contracted I'm in to support us in making open active more maintainable. Um, and I'm in have uh, taken on a piece of work that is going to kind of complete the documentation of the data infrastructure resolve outstanding issues where possible um, and where they can't solve issue outstanding issues within within the time and the resources available, make sure that the issues are documented so other people can in the future. Uh, the second thing we want to do here is design a roadmap and target architecture for open active long term. Actually, we know what we've got today, but do we know what we need in three or five years time? So we, we, we've got an action to think about what those roadmaps look like, and we'll need some input from the W3C into the into the design and development of those roadmaps. 
Um, and then there's a set of continuous improvement deliveries that we want to make. So we have recently completed work that we started last year on R and Python libraries, which make it easier for people to connect to the data feeds and then use those data feeds in analytical applications or, or, or product development. Um, and we know that we need to do some work on the test suite. So once the um, maintenance work that I'm going to do is completed, we will have a look at the test suite and decide how we want to iterate that. And then the last part of Workstream 2 is around stewarding open active data uh, to improve data quality um, and to ensure the specifications continue to meet user needs. And this is probably the least well-defined of the four technical work packages. Um, Andrew, you need to nudge on again. Thank you. Uh, the least of the world to find, least well defined of the packages, um, uh, and that's be mainly because we are advertising at the moment for a data steward, and the two point four will be the data steward's um, workspace essentially. So we know that in this space that we need to do some work on the data specifications and the associated guidance. Uh, we know that there are quite a lot of feeds that don't comply with the current specifications. So we need to work with the providers of those feeds to update them, but also to improve the quality of the data within the feeds. Um, and we need to work with the open active community to improve the integrations between open active and other data sources. Um, we know there is some work to do um, looking at how open active works with active places and open referral, for example. And then finally, we want to we want to get open active adopted as a UK government data standard. Uh, we think that's an important step because theoretically, if things are adopted by the data standards authority, uh, it's easier to make the case to public bodies that they should then use those standards in their business. Um, we're going to need some help with the W3HC on this. We're going to need some help on developing the, the data quality standards. We're going to need some recommendations on how to integrate open active with other standards. Uh, and we're going to need some support in developing specifications, patterns, and guidance if we want to change things. And that, in summary, is the phase five extension and the second work stream. So does anyone have any questions, thoughts, comments, observations at this point? Um, just one clarification question from me, uh, which is the uh, there was mention of funding, and on the slide there's a mention of number of feeds that comply. Is the funding going to be available to help implementers that are implementing or improving their feeds, that type of thing, or is the funding focused on the other side of the market, um, people using data? Is a so 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 the funding? So there's two bits of funding that that could that that. Are available. So first of all, there could be some funding to test different approaches to maintenance, and that's about maintaining the core infrastructure. So that that wouldn't be useful. The um, innovation challenge, I think, that's primarily about use cases and you know improving the use of open active data. But of course, a use case could actually be improving the collection of data. So potentially, you know, if, if someone could make a compelling case, we could maybe use some of the use case challenge funding to improve data feeds. But we'd need to look at that in the context of other things that apply because there is a limit, it is a limited pool. Okay, thank you. Cool. Okay. So moving on then from that, that last piece about um, stewarding data and improving data quality and building relationships with other, other bits of other bits of data. Um, in the second half of the meeting, what we want to do is we want to give a, an update on club data. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hand over to Howard and Darren, if that's all right. Absolutely. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, I'd like to provide an update on the on the club data work. So before Christmas, there were several pieces of work um, 
in progress that, that related to to an overlapping theme. Um, and what kicked it up for us was, I think, one of the national governing bodies or the National Small Ball Rifle Association approached us about starting to open up some of their data um, through Open Active. Um, the, and the challenge there is that they don't have session data. They're not, um, you know, a, a digitally technologically mature organization. So they were looking for um, exploring how, how they could get that data out there um, as a kind of stepping stone. So we explored the the idea of location data alongside the open active standards and how, how it might fit with our opportunity model. Um, and so we're talking about organizations and clubs and location level um, an activity, but not necessarily the date and the time of an event. So it's a, a level up above the the session see the scheduled sessions and session series data that we have. Um, so we, we Darren's going to show some um, uh, a solution to or an approach to that problem to uh, how you can publish club data alongside our our other open active data. Um, and at the same time, London Sport had a, an exercise to capture club level data for England. But we've got Zach and Stephen have joined us today from London Sport. So I will hand over to them in a moment for um, to give us an update on uh, an overview and an update on that. Uh, and just to say that we did, we started to set out this discussion and the um, the pros and cons and, and the some of the detail on as a GitHub issue raised against the opportunity data model. And there's a link in the slide deck there, which will be available on the W3C pages. Um, so that that conversation is still there, and you know, feel free to to contribute and add thoughts. We'll provide an update um, after we've heard from London Sport shortly. And if you want to move on, please, Andrew. Oops, back one. So just very briefly to summarize some of the discussion that we'd had, the idea of sharing club level data, so this is that location, organization level, rather than the date and timed events, is that it's it's easier to do that. And it could be an introduction to getting organizations to open up the data for the first time. And once they're in the habit of sharing that data, particularly if it's shared in a way that's aligns with open active then it paves the way for them moving on to to starting to share session data timed events uh, and that moves us towards that kind of online booking experience that that open active is is designed to to achieve um interestingly and we heard from uh, an irish sporting body agency i'm not sure at uh, the aef a little while ago and this is the approach that they have taken working at the club level data because they recognized that a lot of organizations weren't at that that kind of um they weren't didn't have the booking systems or, or such in place to to share the session and facility level data so they started at this level with the with the hope of, ex of extending so i think that's that's just another potential argument in favor of of this kind of approach of aligning club level data with the open active specification and then but to balance against that nick shared some from previous experience that it showed that it's difficult to keep secondary data up to date and accurate and relevant and that low quality data could have a negative impact on perceptions of open active so there's a balance to be struck um so that's just a quick summary there was a question appeared i think in the chat do we want to take this down debbie hi debbie um on active places, not directly. Um, whoops, get rid of that. Not directly in this exercise so far, but we have. You know, they came along to a, you know, a session probably about a year ago. We have contacts there, and um, and we will explore that. The challenge I have with with active places is that it covers what, 16 or 19 facility types, and, and we know there are more out there than that. So it, it doesn't cover everything in that in that level. Um, 
but it'll be interesting to see the kind of a comparison of the club level data that that London Sport are collecting around London compared to actively active places facilities, and it might you know it might be that they discover new facilities from from that alternative approach to collection. Let's see, uh, see if that answers the question. Right, skip on, and um, I'll hand over to Stephen. I think from London Sport is going to do the update. Do you, do you have any slides, Stephen? Do you want to take over or? Uh, it'll be myself first. Uh, I hour. think because. Yeah, I was going to say Zach's going to go first. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> sorry, Absolutely. Zach. No, no, no worries. Um, we don't have any slides as such, but I was just going to give okay. a rough overview of where we're at with the project, how it came about, and, and what current <laughs> updates are at the moment. Um, so this club data project, we've been commissioned to work on this by the GLA as part of the Civic Index Challenge Fund. Um, so this is to add to their Civic Strength Index as a, as a further indicator of civic strength in, in different boroughs across London. Um, what came about was that within the Civic Strength Index, there was very limited amount of physical activity data available to add to Civic Strength. And we wanted to make sure that we're able to capture a large amount of physical activity data through this club project work in order to be able to add that to the Civic Strength Index. Um, so we undertook a large piece of work in terms of being able to create a club data standard um, for data collection purposes primarily. And we went through a number of iterations of the club data standard um, consulting with various organizations. And we finally were able to get a finalized version of that for data collection purposes. Uh, and we started submitting those to, um, to our partner organizations in order to be able to start collecting some of the data. So where we're at at the moment is, is more or less in the data collection phase of things. We started to reach out to strategic partners, NGBs, local authorities to be able to start to gather some of that data um, and to be able to then, to then include that within the, within the Civic Strength Index, which we're hoping we'll be reporting back to the GLA around September, September of this year. Um, for, on the tech side of things, Stephen will probably talk a little bit more about that in terms of uh, what we've done from a technical perspective to enable this piece of work. So I'll hand that over to you, Stephen. Thanks, Zach. Um, so essentially what we're, what we're doing is we've built out additional fields in our open sessions platform. Um, and then we've uh, created a bulk organization uploader um, <clears throat> we had similar systems already in place for like bulk sessions and, and bulk admin so we've just added uh, more fields in line with with this this standard and we've based the standard around the open active organization data so a lot of fields are common to it uh, you know we we'll, we will be able to pull data from open active to fill in holes from uh but for the club standard, you know, for, for things that we're not not getting returned. Um, and then our our hope is that we can essentially return the spreadsheets that we've we've generated, possibly with some extra records um when when relevant to the NGB in question, and then they can they can maintain those and we can just update those periodically. Um because it's all going into open sessions. Uh, it it, it it aligns with what Howard was saying about the the Irish organization where um that that they would have an account on open sessions we could you know set send them information on the benefits of open active we could get them to to post their sessions at such time that they're ready they're already halfway halfway there um with the, with the accounts set up and then if they're doing that it handles a lot of the uh, the difficulties around whether an organization is still active. Essentially, if you're posting sessions, you're you're active. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's the the main thing that we we we've implemented. We're we're sure there's going to be some some further challenges around the uh, the data quality. You know, after year one, um, but it, a lot of it is supplementing data that is there in in Open Active. One of the um, difficulties with existing open active data is we're generally just looking at like a, a two week window. We, we're not including any of these organizations that um, just do not want to post sessions, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have had feedback up from uh, various NGBs and local authorities that just a lot of people aren't in that position to, to publish session data or their private member organizations. Um, so we're kind of hoping it'll it'll bolster open active and open active will 
um, will give us a, a wider picture on on what we're collecting as well. I'm happy to take any questions from anyone. Just to quickly add to that as well, um, in terms of our our large scale ambitions, is initially we we all have to comply to our funders' um, requirements, and this is this is the aim of the project to, in order to be able to deliver this within our funder requirements initially. But we also know that this data set is has the potential to be valuable um, beyond beyond this this piece of work that we're doing. We feel as if you know it would help us better understand whether the provision of sport and physical activity deliveries is currently fair and accessible. It'll help us to better understand the impact the sport and physical activity sector is having. And we'll also be able to overlay this data that we're collecting with a range of different data sets to better understand the needs and gaps that exist across London at the moment. Um, so we feel as if this is a project that ultimately has a has a lot of potential to be scalable in the long run as well. I just wanted to add, add that two cents in. Uh, Howard, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, on. yeah. I'll, uh, I suppose I'll, I'll kick off with a question. Um, do, do you have an idea, a feeling of how many clubs you, you know you're likely to to end up with? I'm just this is just you know out of curiosity kind of. It's very difficult to to provide an uh, estimate that... in terms of how many clubs we we'd, we'd be able to end up with. Um, it really all depends on the sort of data collection exercise in terms of mm -hmm. how many responses we get uh, from local authorities, NGBs, and so on and so forth. Uh, did you want to add anything, Stephen? I uh, no, was just just echoing that. Yeah, Fair I, I would. I think um, in terms of scalability, um, I think you know what, a, a kind of key thing for me is that the the capability that you've created in open sessions to uh, to extend in that way. I think that that to me is like really yeah. interesting in terms of scalability. Because open sessions, you know, isn't limited to London, is it? That's so. There's that kind of no capability. Yeah, it's a it's a national platform, and we're happy for for anyone to use it. Um, and we have we have had discussions as well um, around open sessions, um, ev eventually having some sort of like upgrade pathway, you know, with the. Uh, with one or various partners, anyone that, that that's interested in building out that integration where we can take somebody from the, the club data project. So, you know, give your NGB of choice, your details, they they fire over a spreadsheet. Well, they'll, they will be able to upload a spreadsheet, which in turn will allow the NGB to, to administer the the club as well as the the uh, the owners of the club themselves. Then over time, maybe you start posting sessions. Then eventually, maybe you want membership or booking services, which which is not part of open sessions. But we could, you know, we're we're interested in exploring a route where that data could be passed into a partner um, as as easily as possible, either by us passing a, a large amount of data from open sessions to the partner, or then pulling it down from Open Active and pre-populating their account with their with their sessions. Okay, brilliant. Tom, do you want to question? <clears throat> Thanks, Stephen. That was super useful. And, and Zach as well. Um, just quick question for me, really, is so is a club an organizer type within the standards? As in like an organization. So an organization type. Or is it just an organization? Like because my just an just an organization. Um, so my my, <clears throat> lot, my my feeling around this would be that it would be interesting to look at a club as an organizer type because there's multiple organizer types that will probably become more prescient in the future, a, like a coach or a um, school or something that doesn't quite fit the club model. But it, in terms of the hierarchy, there's all every opportunity should have an organizer and in terms of how that then relates to what a search experience might look like you can quite clearly group those things together um, but I just think it's probably a time to look at that organizer type and what other organizer types there might be now and in the future that's really helpful uh, Tom we'll, we'll explore that in there uh... 
I'll probably add something to the GitHub discussion uh, around that. Uh, Nathan, I'll take, yeah. take one more question and then, because well, I would like Darren to just uh, give us a quick demo of, of the, uh, another approach that he's been looking at. Nathan? Sure. Um, have you approached any uh, third parties um, that might already have a lot of this information? Um, the one that comes to my mind is Pitch Hero. They've got about 10,000 clubs already. Um, so they might be uh, willing to do some kind of um, open data on that. It's uh, definitely something we're looking to explore in the future. At the stage where we're at at the moment is um, it's really at the data collection stage from from our strategic partners. So the, the people that we've, we're approaching at the moment are local authorities, NGBs, and some of our internal strategic partners as well. Um, and from then on, we'll be able to get an idea of the amount of data we have and collate that with the data that we have on Open Active and get a greater picture of, of where we're at in terms of this of this uh, piece of work. And from then on, it, definitely something that we, we're keeping in mind in terms of consider contacting some of these organizations who already have a large amount of this data as well. Excellent. Uh, Tom, your hand's still up. I assume that's from before, is it? It's gone. Right, brilliant. Uh, so in that case, I'll hand over to Darren. Um, do you want to grab the yep. screen, Darren? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so let me just uh, share my screen. So I'm going to boot off previous screen and throughout my many open windows and tabs, hopefully find the right one. All uh, right, so please give me a nod or a thumbs up if you can share the screen. This is the entry point. So this is the GitHub, GitHub repo for a little um, proof of principle experiment, I guess that you could call it. And um, very much not intended as a replacement for existing infrastructure and systems, but complementary for the certain audience that we're talking about, especially those smaller players. So we were looking at a really low barrier to entry, low tech requirement. Um, Open Active, as we know, has a rich and flexible data structure. Uh, the essential info for clubs is captured in a subset of the uh, fully available fields. And so we wanted to just focus on a subset of those fields, in particular, just the organization location and the, the features which are relevant for that location as well. And we thought, OK, so spreadsheets, everyone likes spreadsheets and um, regardless of your technical ability or like them or love them, you still have to kind of use them and get and get used to them. Um, there's no separate platform which is needed and they're flexible and easy to update for the, the main users like the actual data um, owners, the activity providers. Um, then we were thinking about uh, Google. Uh, so in-house we use G Suite and Google accounts even for the public are free as we know and they also have very solid and mature API access um, to spreadsheets with access control as well. So I took it, we took it upon ourselves to um, wonder about flattening out a subset of the open active data into a spreadsheet format and then trying to read those sheets. So provide access to um, the API bot, as it were, um, to then produce a singular RPD feed in the standard open active RPD format. So basically the, 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 the data provider, the activity um, uh, provider, whoever has the, the Google spreadsheet, which is based on a, a template, which I'll show you in a second. Um, they enable access to um, our uh, to the actual owner of the RPD feed system, which then reads those. Uh, however, it, often it's deemed to be necessary. This could be daily, weekly, or it could even be um, a completely live read per call, which is probably overkill in this uh, context of not having that temporal component. It's only really the static information that we're looking for. So this is just um, sort of a, a little overview, a peek behind the scenes of a, a private GitHub repo that we've got. I've uh, highlighted it. This is work in progress for anyone that has access to this uh, little experiment. And there's two sections in the usage. So exactly what I've said to um, the club owners, if this service were to be live, this is what they would have to do. Download a template, make sure that it's in the right format, provide access um, via the standard sharing features. If people aren't aware of those sharing features, then this um, walks them through it step by step and then uh, fill it out as necessary. And the service owner, whoever that is, will establish the API to read those spreadsheets, uh, which are sent to them as this is how the, they're all logged. So within every Google um, spreadsheet, every Google document, there's a, a unique uh, code like this, which would then be put in a, in a file and readable by the system. So that's the over idea. Uh, again, experimental proof of principle using the Google system. So what does it look like? 
Um, there's, I've got a template here and then I've got a filled out, a filled out example. So this is what we would expect a, a club owner to download and fill out. I'll just scoot through the tabs one by one, um, just so you understand the basic structure. And then I'll hop back and, and I'll talk about the details. So if you look at the tabs at the bottom, we have clubs, organizers, locations, addresses, images, and amenity features. If I just jump through one by one, you'll see that the first column in each case is, um, just something which is called code. And those codes basically chain the information through in a manner which is best exemplified if I jump through to an example. So the example, this is uh, exactly how we'd, we would want a, a club to identify themselves ultimately as a combination of an organizer and a location. Now, one organizer can have multiple locations. So these can be uh, comma separated. So there's a little bit of instructions here on the second row. So code one, this is club one is organizer one who looks after locations one and two. What is organizer one? We come to the organizer tab and this is organizer one. Well, locations one and two are locations one and two, the first two um, filled out rows within the locations tab here. So you see the way, uh, the manner in which that works. And it's the same for the uh, other tabs as well. For example, uh, the images are a comma separated list of, of codes from the images tab. So. Uh, location one has uh, images two, three, and four. These are images two, three, and four on here. So just these URLs and then any kind of extra optional fields. So the basic structure of any one of these tabs, I'll use the organizer tab to just exemplify. So the very first row is the um, field, uh, how it's actually stated within the open active standard. Second row is uh, an example or the information as to whether or not this has to be a um, comma, uh, comma separated list of codes from uh, a code comma of, of another uh, tab within the sheet. Uh, the third one, the third row here is just as to whether or not it's optional, required or recommended as according to the open active standard and then the actual user's data for the rest of the columns. So hopefully that's relatively clear how it all changed through all seeded by this very first tab, which is clubs. So that's the only thing which isn't um, explicitly present within the uh, open active standard clubs. And we've just regarded it as a combination of an organizer looking after a number of locations with the data sort of chained through in this flattened way. Now, of course, um, open active data being linked data is extensible. You can you know, put fields within fields within fields and so on and so forth. And, and it can get much, much richer than the spreadsheet. This is very much just taking a subset of that information, flattening it down into relatively few tabs to provide this low barrier to entry for people that are just comfortable with spreadsheets. They have some static data that they want to upload that fits into this mold. They don't require this um, temporal streaming component of sessions being available on a day-to-day -day basis, yes or no. And there can be a separate RPD feed owner that reads those sheets based on the codes that the club owners send to them. So that's the system. That's the experiment. Um, and just a kind of final tab here. So this is actually the sort of live code, which is uh, reading information from four mock spreadsheets, which I've I've set up here with this uh, details. And that will be served at an endpoint, um, which will be made known to people that want to read club data. So that's an overview of our experiment. And I think with that, I'll hand back to Andrew. Awesome, thank you, Darren. Um, it's, it's a really nice little well, experiment. Um, Howard, did you want to say something? No, I was just going to say, just any questions there on, on that kind of approach? I think so. What what we didn't quite see on the screen is that there is a small, was, was it JavaScript code or something that turns the Google script into a thing? So that's a yeah. deployable um, widget that reads the Google sheet and serves a RPD feed. So that's that was a gap, I think, and, and now I understand it. So... Yep. Thank you, Darren. Very good. Yes. Okay, no problem. Um, so, if there's no further questions, I think that was really interesting. But uh, Andrew, I think you have got an AOB slide, haven't you? So... I do. Yes, which you should be able to see now. Um, so, so thanks, Darren. So, 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 I think what we've heard there is that there are, there is opportunity in club data. Uh, there are people thinking about solutions. We have an open issue on GitHub. Please go and contribute to that discussion. Um, and and I think what we need to do as a group is probably um, think about how we can agree uh, a pattern that builds on all of that good work. Um, so, uh, and finally, we've got 
with three minutes left. Um, so does anyone have any AOB? Okay. Um, it's not AOB, but I've just put the uh, the GitHub link in the chat. That's fine. Thanks, Howard. Um, okay. Does anyone have any suggestions on topics for future meetings? Is there anything that people have come across in the last couple of months that they thought we need to talk about that at the W3C? Are there any ideas or anything like that? Do anyone would like to volunteer to present something at the next W3C? Okay, in, in uh, that case, the, the, the topic at the next meeting, which will be on Wednesday, 20th of March, will be probably be us coming back to open referral and continuing the discussion we started last autumn. Um, so I, I think if there's nothing else, um, all, all it remains for me to do is uh, thank you for joining the meeting today. Um, if you haven't already, please join the Open Active Slack community at slack.openactive.io. Um, Slack will alert you to meetings. We are starting to build discussions in Slack. Uh, we want to make much more use of it. Um, if you aren't a registered member of this community group, um, we'd encourage you to register at w3c.openactive.io. Um, that helps us understand who is part of the group and who is involved in the group when we make decisions going forward. Uh, but all, uh, thank you for joining today. I hope you've enjoyed the W3C and I look forward to seeing you on the 6th or the 20th of March. Have a Great rest of your week. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone.